Welcome to the Wealth Stream Podcast. The team at Hightower Great Lakes share their insights and passions for empowering their clients to live their best life. In this energetic podcast, we will take you on a journey to help you navigate your financial future, overcome life's challenges to reach your financial goals, and find the financial clarity you've been searching for. Let's explore the downstream impact of your wealth and what it means to you, your family, and your community to live greater. Hello and welcome to The Wealth Stream with Tim Scannell from Hightower Great Lakes. Good afternoon, Tim. How are you? I'm doing good, Eric. How about yourself? Fantastic. It's always Excellent. a pleasure, sir. And I know that we're talking about mastermind groups today, so that really excites me because I'm a firm believer in that and all the positive that can come out of it. Yes, I agree. We've had some great successes with clients, and personally, I've, I've used them for my whole career, so I love them. All right. What what are we going to be talking about? I mean, obviously mastermind groups, but how are we breaking this down? Sure. So we've talked in the past, I guess probably almost every podcast I repeat myself, but you know, our wealth management process talks gets into investment management, advanced planning concepts, and where we really add value, I think, is when what we call relationship management. And that consists of, you know, where is a client going to work with me, primarily with other people on my team? How often do they like to meet, discuss, et cetera? Uh, these days, do they like Zoom or WebEx, you know, as opposed mm-hmm. to meeting? But um, in addition to just how they work with our team, you know, we really spend a lot of time trying to uh, integrate or collaborate with their other professional network, their advisors like CPA, attorney, et cetera. And oftentimes, specifically when it relates to business owners, uh, professionals, we recommend that they get involved in mastermind groups. And so I wanted to cover just specifically mastermind groups or CEO groups, they're also called, uh, and just talk about you know examples of how some clients have used them, how I've used them, and why we think they make sense for everybody. All right, let's jump in. Okay, so when we're working with clients, when we're talking about um, solutions, we always focus on you know what pain or you know what problem are we trying to solve. And you know, I personally had this um, I. I started my career in Chicago, worked for about 11 years in Chicago, and then moved to Northwest Indiana, been here for 20 plus years. The challenge I have, the challenge most business owners have is, um, Eric, I'm sure you have the same same challenge is, you know, we're operating daily inside of our business. We're Mm -hmm. focusing on employees, clients, getting things done, committing, you know, uh, fulfilling obligations. But oftentimes when you step out, and look at the look at the business and making want to make sure that you're doing things properly. You know, you're trying to find best practices. So where do I go? You know, to find out what other advisors are doing. What are the uh, with their clients for their clients? What tax planning, estate planning, what advanced planning ideas do they have or operational ideas? And it's not like I'm going to call my uh, local competitor here in my wonderful town of Valparaiso, Indiana. Because um, it's just not something you do. So mm-hmm. I saw it for years, and I participated in a number of mastermind groups. But it, to me, it, it's it's a place where other professionals, they can either be in your industry or not. They get together, they share, they collaborate, they talk about problems, solutions, and they just share best practices or, is one of the primary things that they do. That's why I like them, and that's kind of what they solve and why you know, if you assume or if you agree that that's the case and you need it, you know, if you're listening and you say, yeah, that makes sense, I could use that. Um, the next challenge or the pain point that clients will bring up to us is, well, yeah, that makes sense, Tim, but, um, you know, where do you find the time and, you know, where do I go to find these groups? Um, I'm not aware of them or how do I find, when do they meet, how often, what's mm-hmm. best practices for even that? So that's where we really, over the years, have developed uh, processes um, I've picked up a number of books that we share with clients that kind of cover it. Um, but selecting the right group would be the next step. And that's, it's difficult because obviously it could be a waste of time if you don't have the, the right group that you're in. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that I think people are concerned about is that how do I join a group with people that are in my same industry that aren't my competitors, right? Because if they're in my same town, like you said, then we're probably not going to want to get together necessarily because we are still in competition for each other. And if I'm sharing my best practices with them and they're just feverishly taking notes <laughs> you know, yeah. and they're not contributing anything back, then, you know, I'm giving away what I do uh, and what makes me successful. So that those are, those are great questions for each business owner to ask themselves. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I've had examples where, 
Uh, I have one client in particular who he sold a business about three years ago. I uh, had been participating in, uh, I think a lot of people have heard of the YPO, Young Professionals Organization. There's different mm -hmm. YPOs all around the country. And he had really joined and participated in a group for almost 20 years. And I'd like to think that I was the primary assistant or driver that helped him eventually sell. And, and I think I added a lot of value. But really, he was able to brainstorm and collaborate and share examples of the exit process with people in his group who had done it before, who had tried it before, some successful, some not. Um, so sharing knowledge and experience in a non-threatening, non-competitive environment um, is one of the primary reasons why I've seen it add so much value for my clients. Yeah, absolutely. But but in addition to that, the other thing that I have found is um, like I've been in peer groups or coaching programs, you know, these mastermind groups, CEO groups. They also give you kind of a little competitive, what I call a competitive advantage or because of the peer coaching. So the other thing that um, the same client did was, he, you know, in addition to the regular meetings he would have with his group, he would also, you know, pick a couple of them and really they would just give each other goals for the quarter, for the semi-annual, et cetera. And they really held, held themselves or held each other to those goals and they became kind of like um, accountability partners, I guess is what you would say. Nice. Yep. And so I think, you know, it raises your game. Yeah, I think it really helps you in business. Yeah, I think anybody can benefit from an accountability partner, especially that someone that knows there's a there's a swap there, right? You're holding each other accountable. It's not just you holding somebody accountable and this is your now your job. They're going to help you do the exact same thing. And it's just somebody to say, "Okay, this is what you wanted. This is what you said you wanted to do. This was your goal." I'm not judging you on your goal. I'm just, I'm asking you, did you do the things that you said you were going to do for the last two weeks or however, however often you're meeting. And that is so powerful to be able to be held accountable to somebody else that knows what you're going through and is, is kind of lived that life, uh, in business or is currently living that same life in business and saying, yeah, you know what I, I said, I didn't have time to do it, but let's be honest. I, I got distracted by a, B and C. So I need to do something different. Maybe it's time blocking, or maybe it's, you know, I've, I've got to remind somebody within my office to make sure that they help me to, to realize, okay, by the end of this week, I have to have this done. So I'm prepared for next week. There's all sorts of strategies that you can put in place, but until you're ready to answer that question of how did you do this week or last week or the last two weeks since we met last, tell me what happened. And uh, until you're ready to answer that question, you're, you're just not going to face the true issues that are stunting your growth in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I have a one client who is a, a car dealer, and he participates in, I think he calls it the 25 or the 50 group, but either way, it's a group of other dealers around the country. So again, you're in that case, they're all in the same industry, they're all doing the same thing. They might have different, you know, Chevy versus Ford versus whoever, mm -hmm. but they're all sharing common um, ideas. And what I find with them is they're even more competitive because there's actual like common benchmarks or numbers like cars sold or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, different industry benchmarks that they all see, they all read every day. Um, so they're able to share more of that and they even become a little more competitive. So when they meet in addition to, you know, golfing afterwards or competing that way, um, I find that that, that group in particular has been pr really, really competitive and they've all raised their game as a result of it. Nice. I like that. And I just had a recent uh, instance, you know, right now we're, when we're recording, we're going through the uh, social distancing protocols for the coronavirus. And there was a client of mine who was an ophthalmologist. And so very successful, um, but he's apparently um, non-essential, of course, according to the government. So he is shut down, right? Primarily because a lot of the things they do are elective surgeries, mm -hmm. uh, which makes sense. But what he's finding is that, you know, he's, he, through his peer group, and these are all the people in his um, mastermind group are not in the same industry. They're just more like next gen, uh, mid 40s, mid 50s business owners, entrepreneurs. He considers himself a entrepreneur who happens to be an ophthalmologist, you know, so he really loves business. Mm -hmm. And he's what they're doing right now is they're brainstorming for opportunities where some of these, his competitors, his op other ophthalmologists are, maybe they're not as well capitalized, maybe they had borrowed too much, or maybe in, in a couple instances, they're near retirement and the ones who are in retirement are just saying, you know, I don't necessarily have the energy to, to go through this again for the next three years. So 
he's really looking at it as an opportunity with his group to brainstorm and come up with ideas for maybe growing, you know, taking an opportunity to acquire other practices right now, hmm. you know, while things are not good for some of the other, his competitors. Yeah. Interesting. So anyway, that's just kind of why you do it. I think of the sharing of knowledge. I think it raises your game. I think you also get good ideas from it. So I find that in these CEO groups, the members are smart driven. They're very, very uh, collaborative. They have a culture of sharing and they all tend to give back um, in, a, in a very positive way. So everyone, everyone is better off uh, by participating in them. Perfect. All right. So Eric, let me give you an example of two examples, actually one of the client and then one of um, how I've done it myself. Mm -hmm. So I have a client who is a super smart chemical engineer, uh, worked in the steel industry uh, locally here in Northwest Indiana, and actually came up with an idea about how he could make uh, steel bend more efficiently, which mm -hmm. it was way over my head. But anyway, he ended up um, getting uh, funded by a group out of California, moved his family out to Silicon Valley, and um, started working on this concept and proved the concept, and now they're actually in manufacturing now. I mention this because when I talked to him, what I didn't realize was one of the benefits of the Silicon Valley process out there and the reason why he needed to go out there versus stay local is the group of people that funded him also created a mastermind group of other CEOs who had these other high-tech ideas. And part of it was collaboration, sharing, what are you doing, what are, what are, you know, what's he doing, what, they're, what are they doing. The other part of it, though, what I realized was they're also uh, looking for to train the next CEO. So, for example, if this, if my client, if his idea had not worked and it did, they were really in a process where they, through collaboration with these other like-minded, entrepreneurial, you know, venture CEOs, um, he could step in and take over another project um, for another company or another thought or another idea for the this venture capital firm. Mm. So it, the opportunities, I think, are also one of the other reasons why, uh, like in other investment opportunities, other career opportunities are also one of the reasons why these are such great value. Because what I have found is oftentimes you're in a uh, mastermind group with maybe somebody in a different industry. Maybe they're in real estate. Maybe you're in medicine. Maybe you're in you know manufacturing. But just by collaborating and sharing, you find out about investment opportunities you find out about people, you know, great uh, people that you might want to recruit and retain if, if they're leaving another firm. So there's a there's a lot of side benefits to those things like that. And that was just an example of the one client. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I'd never heard of that before. So that's fantastic. The other thing I'll just mention for me personally, again, going back to the idea that I'm a small company, um, I looking for best practices that I can bring back to my clients. Advanced, whether that's advanced planning, technology, other resources. And, you know, it's I needed to do that in a safe place where I'm not, um, you know, sharing confidential data, things like that. In my career, what I did initially was I used to go to like financial planning conferences, which I thought were valuable, but required a lot of travel, required you to be away from your family. You learn a lot when you're there, but it's often hard to come back then and implement when you're just, again, back on your own. So I ended up about 20, uh, 2002 joining uh, this peak group, which is Ron Carson has a coaching program. Mm -hmm. And I, I valued that because, again, you had twice a year meetings, but you also had peer review and peer coaching throughout the year, which really helped out a lot. But ultimately, in 2008, when I, um, I affiliated with Hightower, primarily because of the what I call the culture of sharing among that group. It's a, it's basically a series of, at this point, there's almost 100 different advisory groups around the country from New York to L.A. to Atlanta to, you know, to my small town of Valparaiso. And we will typically have two to three meetings a year where you're learning about best practices, but then you're also breaking out into groups, into these mastermind groups where maybe I'm connecting with somebody who is much more of a manufacturing, construction, entrepreneurial business owner. Uh, there, there's other advisors who focus on pro athletes, right? There's other advisors mm -hmm. who focus strictly, on, focus strictly on retirement. So it allows you to get the general informational best practices, but at the same time break out with other people 
um, you know, who are more like-minded and you can share ideas again in, in a more uh, smaller mastermind group. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. If me telling you that you should form a mastermind or join a mastermind group um, doesn't convince you, I'll just give you a little bit of empirical evidence. There's a, a survey of done of 108 entrepreneurs that had participated in these high-end mastermind groups. And just to give you a couple stats, Erica, there's, you know, roughly 75% of the group voted, you know, say it's extremely valuable. About one-fifth said it was valuable, and really only about 2% in this survey said it was not all that valuable. Um, and I'm guessing that in that case, it's probably that they just didn't put enough effort into it themselves, you know? Yeah, I, I was just going to say that because of, of my history with working as a coach and consultant with, with business owners, I find that if somebody truly gets involved and they, they're actively participating, I've never had a complaint. So yeah. I'm, I'm really curious about that 2% if, if how much they committed to it and so on and so forth. But no judgment. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. I've been in groups with those people. You know, they don't show up. So what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, and then if you dig deeper into that survey, you know, over 90% of the, the entrepreneurs that were surveyed in these groups found it extremely valuable. And 70% said, you know, it's not just the education they got, but also a lot of the... Um, like I went, like I mentioned earlier, when the investment ideas or the investment opportunities or the mm -hmm. networking opportunities like that are really what what it's worth. So, again, I'm not gonna. I've probably covered a little bit too much of it in terms of why, but you know, the next step is if you if you believe that you should be in one of these, and I hope you do. The biggest challenge is you know how do you select the right group? Um, I've gone through it myself personally. I've gone through it with clients. We can go through your industry association to try and identify them. We could, you know, just look locally and regionally. There is a series. There's a number of different uh, mastermind groups that are not industry specific. You know, we've worked through industry, um, like I said, associations where we have found them uh, that were more industry specific. But in general, there's going to be a couple traits that you know you want to focus on in terms of when you're looking at, you know, selecting. I should say and. Uh, the, the top one in my mind is really uh, they, they typically have some sort of executive director or somebody who's managing or running it. You know, we would want to help you thoroughly or you would want to for sure thoroughly evaluate, you know, does their background, reputation, their skill sets um, go to a couple of meetings. You know, they, they typically allow you to participate or observe one or two just to make sure it's a cultural fit for you. And then the other one, too, is just, you know, really evaluating the membership. So. I looked at a couple um, that were regional, actually just to the east of me, and I just felt like the the industries that they were in, the CEOs just did not have this. Uh, they weren't applicable. A lot of the same issues they had weren't the some of the same issues I had. You know, the mm -hmm. manufacturing has just a lot more capital investment, for example. So that seemed to dominate a lot of the topics they talked about. Um, they weren't as technology driven. They weren't as you know retail can customer service driven as we are so again there's you look at the membership you look at who they are um, and then when you go to one of these meetings just as a sample you you maybe stay towards stay at the end and just kind of uh do informal surveys or questions with them so tim let me ask you this if you're looking at these groups for your clients and you guys are having these conversations what sizes do you feel are the the best sizes for mastermind groups ah uh, that's a great question i have found that they're generally going to be as many as 10, and I think it's just a little unwieldy, 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 excuse me, I can't say it 14 times in a row, but I think the smaller the group, the better. I worked on a group, uh, with a group, I should say, where there was actually 12 of us from around the country, and it just got too, too hard. There's not enough time, you know, so if you block out a certain amount of time for three different topics, and you're giving everybody the opportunity to bring a concern or talk about an issue or talk about a growth strategy, you, you run out of time if you have way too many people. So I really think from what I've seen, and I could be wrong, but just my personal experience, more like six to 10 is a really ideal group of, to be participating with. And that's why it's so critical that you really evaluate um, the members, you know, to make sure that it's a cultural fit for you. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice. And, and that gets just to the other point that I'll make about selecting the group is, you really need to be very clear about your reasons for joining the mastermind group. When when we work with clients and we talk about this strategy, we help them go through a process of 
just focusing and refining their own personal and business mission and vision. Uh, you know, what's their value, promise, what are they trying to accomplish? Because that helps you. It gives you direction, not just in all of your business activity, but specifically in this case, in selecting the proper mastermind group. So in the case of the auto dealer, you know, it became apparent that he really wanted and needed um, an industry focused group because he wanted, he, he likes the benchmarks. He likes the numbers. He wants to see what everybody else is doing. Whereas um, I have a manufacturing client that I mentioned earlier, and he really wanted a diversity of industry, a uh, diversity of interest. You know, there was actually an attorney in the group, um, you know, head of a head partner of a law firm. So he just wanted to get um, as, as wide an opinion as possible. So that's, that's what his goal was. That's what he went into it looking for. And that's how he selected it. Gotcha. All right. And then I guess I'll just finish that. You know, if you if you agree that you'll benefit from it, and I hope you do, uh, and let's say you're at the point where you've selected the right uh, group, the key to maximizing results or getting the greatest benefit is really being a giver. You know, you, when you go into this thing, you know, that, that 2% we mentioned earlier that, you know, didn't get anything out of it, it's primarily because, or I'm guessing, because they didn't put anything into it. Mm -hmm. You have to attend the meetings. You know, you want to be ready for taking a call from one of the members who has an issue. You you need to be, you know, sharing of resources. It's a lot like, Eric, I'm sure you read about or you're a master of uh, podcasting, you're a master of social media, and they one of the things they well, say is you. <laughs> you, you really need to be a giver, right? I mean, you need mm -hmm. to be contributing. I forget the quote, but somebody once told me, and I think it goes all the way back to the Middle Ages, but seek to understand before being understood. I think that's how it goes. Something like that, yeah. But the point is, the more you give in these groups, the more you'll get. The more you attend, the more you'll learn, the more you'll get to know these people, get to, you know, the collaboration really happens after a while. And you also need to understand the limits. You know, there are some instances where I've gotten involved in some where the, the, their other members are trying to help you uh, solve divorce issues or things like that that I'm not qualified even to get into, right? So mm -hmm. there's also limits, you know, but, um, and that gets to, you know, the point about the executive director or whoever's managing it because they need to be able to run a good meeting. They need to be able to stay on the agenda, keep the time. If you're getting everybody to commit a day and you tell them it's three hours, you want it to be three hours, right? You don't want exactly. to keep them too long. And the last thing I'll say about these in order to make it you know, work as in maximum is you need to be patient because um, joining these groups is a long term commitment. It takes a while for the collaboration, the you know, the appreciation, the understanding between all the members to really become nurtured. And that's really where, you, like, like the guy I mentioned earlier, he'd been in his group for almost twenty years, um, mm -hmm. and he he will say to you that that is one of the greatest things that he ever did that helped his business. Yeah. And going back to what you were saying earlier, I think that everybody can agree that the basics that you've kind of laid out of how you can maximize your results and, and be more successful are really the key to any relationship, right? If you want a relationship to go really well, try to give more than you receive. Everybody knows somebody in their life that they're they're one of those people that, God bless them, they're a leech, right? I mean, they're, they're there to take, 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 and it's kind of a selfish environment or a selfish situation. And... You don't want to be that person in these groups. You go there, you listen, you learn, you get to know them on an individual basis and, and give the best you possibly can. And, and the people in these groups will see that and say, now this is somebody who really wants to learn. They're eager to learn. They're eager to help other people out. I want to be eager to help them out. Nine times out of 10. I mean, you're always going to get that one, you know, crummy apple or whatever, but I've never come across a, a business networking group or a masterminds group where Anybody who's willing to give of their time and their energy and their experience and their expertise, I've never seen a group not just absolutely emulate that person to a, a, a high position as far as just honor or respect. You know what? This this guy knows what it's all about or this woman knows what it's all about and that's, that's helping each one of these people in this group succeed. Um, and I love to see that. You know, just getting back to the key of, in my mind, it's all about the people in the group. I have four ladies who are clients of mine who are CEOs in different industries. One's commercial real estate, uh, one's trucking, you know, one's high tech, uh, the other's manufacturing. And, you know, what they tell me and what I've seen is it's hard for them 
to find uh, peer groups, right, among in those industries with specifically with other women CEOs. So like one of the things we did was we created a study group or created a, a mastermind group with these four CEOs, different industries. But the common theme is, you know, they all have hiring, firing, growth, technology. They all have the same issues, but they also have the common theme that they're looking for, you know, the experiences that maybe, you know, f women in business go up against, you know, that maybe uh, not everyone else understands. So, but yeah. they, but I think this has been, it's a great thing for them. Uh, it's great collaboration. Um, and I think they've all benefited from it. Yeah, I, I agree hundred uh, percent. One of the things I did in my own practice was started women's groups uh, because again, it, it, a lot of different uh, industries are dominated by men. And so they do face different challenges and it's, it's good to be able to compare and contrast and say, okay, where did you find success? How did you find that? How, what did you do differently? What did you do differently? And, and women, honestly, in my opinion, are way better communicators. And so when they start that communication, everybody in that group feels more empowered, stronger, and they, they succeed quicker because they're willing to talk about things. Or a lot of guys, you have to pull teeth. Okay, what are you facing? What, what, what's going on? And finally, we kind of relent and say, okay, well, here's what my problem is. Uh, I don't find that nearly as much in, in women's groups. And so those are always just a joy to see how quickly they uh, rise to the occasion, help each other out, and how everybody benefits. Yeah. And I, it's, again, it's just an example of how really every entrepreneur, every business owner, every professional could really use some sort of mastermind group or CEO group. I think it, it makes you better. Yep. And this is a great conversation to continue, but not on today's podcast because we're out of time. But <laughs> if somebody wants to continue this conversation, what number should they reach at, Tim? They could always call me at 219-246-5370 or send me an email, tscannell at hightoweradvisors.com or go to our website, hightowergreatlakes.com, where you can find additional resources. Great stuff, Tim. Appreciate your time today. All right. Thank you very much. You bet. And thank you all for listening to the Wall Street Podcast with Tim Scannell. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Tim comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at High Tower Great Lakes, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Wealth Stream Podcast. We hope you gained some valuable insight that you can apply to your life and share with others. Please don't forget to subscribe below to be notified when new episodes become available. And don't forget to live greater. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Hightower Great Lakes. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Hightower Great Lakes is a group of investment professionals registered with Hightower Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC, and with Hightower Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor with the SEC. Securities are offered through Hightower Securities, LLC. Advisory services are offered through Hightower Advisors, LLC. 